father. Is it over? At long last. No king rules forever, my son. I see. Only darkness before me. Who among us can forget scaling the ice crown tundra citadel and witnessing the fall of the Needle King? Heartbreaking. Hello, and welcome to the Pokemon Fire Red uh, and Leaf Green in game tier list. What's an in-game tier list? So I'm going to be ranking these Pokemon based purely on how well they help you get from your house to the Hall of Fame. That means I don't care at all about their aesthetics or their competitive viability. I might mention those things when I'm talking about the Pokemon, but they don't actually factor into how high or low I rank these Pokemon. What factors do I consider? Well, one is availability. That is, how much of the game can these Pokemon actually help you with? So for example, your starters, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, they're your starters. You start with them, so they literally are there for the entire game. They have perfect availability. Whereas a Pokemon like, say, Omanyte, you can only get near the very end of the game after you reach Cinnabar Island, so he has very poor availability because he's basically not in the game. I do weight availability highly, so Pokemon that are like kinda eh, but for the whole game, might end up better than Pokemon that are like kinda good, but only for a very tiny fraction of the game. I consider mid-game to be about Celadon City-ish, and anything from Fuchsia City onwards to be late game. And if you're a late game Pokemon, you better be pretty darn incredible if you want to score well on this list. The other main thing I consider is how offensive a Pokemon is. For in-game playthroughs, you basically want to smash everything in one hit and just do that over and over and over until the game ends. That means that Pokemon whose main strength lies in defensive utility, while that might be useful in, like, competitive, I don't care about <laughs> for a brain-dead in-game playthrough where you just smash, smash, smash. So Pokemon that favor offensive stats will place much more highly than Pokemon weighted towards defensive stats. I'm also assuming we're doing an efficient playthrough, so we're not necessarily trying to bolt to the end of the game in the minimum amount of time possible, but we're also not trying to waste too much time. I mean, we'll go to side objectives, we'll get optional items, maybe pick up some extra Pokemon if they're strong enough, but we're also not gonna spend like three or four hours grinding in a patch of grass to get our Beedrill up to level 50 so we can like post angry comments about how Beedrill is actually good and I'm a fraud. Those are the criteria I'm going to be using. How about we talk about the actual tiers that I'm going to be sorting these Pokemon into. Whoop. So up at the very top, we have the S tier. These Pokemon are excellent. If you're not using them, you're a fool, or you maybe just don't like the Pokemon in that tier. A tier, staples, and steel is in this game. So I am talking about metal staples. Pokemon in the A tier are just very, very good. Uh, I think that they make your team much stronger overall, and I would recommend using them. B tier. These Pokemon are good. They're not necessarily like stand out, break the game strong, but they're good. They have some flaws that I think are outweighed by their pros. Next, we have the SEAC tier. These are basically for just the flood of mediocre water types that you get that would be in the letter C tier, except that they're water types and water is OPOP, so I think they get their own tier, and there's a zillion of them in every Pokemon game ever, and I'm really sick of it. Then we have the letter C tier. These are Pokemon that are usable, like they're fine. I think they have significant flaws that prevent me from recommending them for like a good tier, but they're fine. Eh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of Pokemon in C tier. Then we have D for don't bother. These Pokemon I think are actually just like trash. <laughs> I would not use these unless you really like the Pokemon or you just want to make your play experience more difficult. And I say it in every tier list video, but I'll say it again here. This is a very easy game designed for illiterate children. <laughs> You can literally clear the game, like, without looking at the screen by mashing random buttons, right? You can beat the game with a Magikarp. <laughs> so, you can clear the game with anything. Me saying a Pokemon is in Don't Bother doesn't mean that you can't beat the game with them. It just means they're bad at beating the game. And the lowest tier is the Unknown Dungeon. For Pokemon that literally are not obtainable <laughs> during the portion of the game that I'm ranking, which is from the start until you first become the champion, 
So Mewtwo literally is in the Unknown Dungeon, can't obtain it till you become the champion. Uh, Moltos here has migrated from Victory Road to, I believe, Mount Ember, which is now post-game. Uh, it's not that great, it probably would have ended up being in like very low C, because even if it was not Victory Road, you can't really use it, except for the Elite Four, where it's not very good. Uh, and for whatever reason, Magmar here has also been moved to Mount Ember instead of Cinnabar Mansion, so you can no longer get it before the Elite Four. That's two fire types that you can't get during the main playthrough. Fire type fans have been oppressed since, uh, what year did this game come out? Like 2004, since 2004. It's time for us to rise up, become fire flying types, everyone should be charged. Alright, I'll, I'll stop. Alright, that's all the pre-preamble about how I'm actually going to be constructing the list. Let's talk about what's new in the remakes. So here in Fire Red and Leaf Green, we've got that same great Gen 1 flavor. Hope you're not sick of it because it never goes away. <laughs> uh, but it's packaged now in a new coat of paint and with a few mechanical adjustments. Let's talk about some of those mechanical changes. So they reworked some moves. Rap no longer prevents you from acting. Rage no longer the worst move in Pokemon history, although it's still pretty bad. Crit rates overall were completely reworked. Crit is no longer tied to your speed, so faster Pokemon have been nerfed. High crit moves, notably Slash and Razor Leaf, and also Karate Chop, I guess, no longer just mean crit moves. <laughs> in Gen 1, they basically always crit. Now, they just have a high chance to crit, which means like 16% chance to crit, which means they're not really worth using, or at least they're not nearly as good as they were in actual Gen 1. The stat experience system has been replaced by the EV, or effort value system. Stat experience existed in generations 1 and 2. You basically got bonuses to all of your stats, up to a cap, by defeating enemy Pokemon. And what this really did was it made you really, really buff compared to enemies, because you just had huge bonuses to all of your stats, while your opponents never had that. Under the effort value system, you still get those bonuses, but you can only get a certain amount total and it's distributed among all of your stats because you're like fighting random things throughout the game. All this really means like in a nutshell is that you are not quite as overpowered compared to your enemies as you used to be. And this really nerfs like mixed attackers in particular because you no longer have both of your attacking stats maxed out. There was also the special split. So special was only one stat in generation one and it has since been split into special attack and special defense. What this generally means is that if you had really high special in Gen 1, you've been nerfed, and if you had really low special in Gen 1, you've been buffed. Generally. Then we have a few changes to the type chart. So Fire now resists Ice. Poison is no longer weak to bug. They didn't really matter in Gen 1 because there weren't any good bug moves, and it doesn't really matter here in Gen 3 because there still aren't any good bug moves, at least not on bug types themselves. Fighting type is no longer a punchline, <laughs> see what I did there, uh, because it actually has like usable moves. It's still pretty bad though. Psychic has theoretically been nerfed by the addition of a soft counter in the form of steel types and a hard counter in the form of dark types. Man, check out that robust roster of dark types. Steel at least exists in the game in the form of the Magnemite and Magneton line, but you can basically ignore them. Abilities have been added, which you'd think would be a big deal, but it's basically a footnote because we're not talking about Magic Guard or like Drought here. We're mostly talking about passive bonuses or passive nothing. <laughs> so you've got abilities like Kenai, now you don't have to worry about Sand Attack, whoa. Or Hyper Cutter, now you don't have to worry about Growl, whoa. But then we also have abilities like Runaway which lets you run away even if you're slower than the opponent. Wow. Or Illuminate, which increases the encounter rate. That's bad. <laughs> That's... I will mention abilities when they're relevant, but they're mostly not. There's now held items. They don't matter, except in one case, which we'll mention when, when we get there. And finally, there's the new evolutions. So a bunch of Gen 1 Pokemon either got brand new evolutions or new branching evolutions courtesy of the Gen 2 games. And for whatever reason, those evolutions are unavailable until you unlock the National Dex, which is what I consider to be post-game. On screen now you should see all the Pokemon that got new evolutions. We'll talk more in depth when we get to these Pokemon individually, but just briefly, Eevee, Slowpoke, Poliwhirl, Gloom, Chansey, Scyther, and Seedra don't really care that they can't evolve. At least they don't care enough, it wouldn't change their tier placement. 
F's in the comments for Golbat and Porygon, F you's in the comments for Onyx. We are almost ready to begin. I just want to say that making these tier lists has made me keenly aware that nobody cares how highly I rate things. They care how low I rate them. I could say that Lickitung is the best Pokemon in the game because the Pokemon Stadium minigame, where you eat a bunch of sushi go round sushi as a Lickitung, was really fun. And people in the comments would be like, oh yeah, I could see Lickitung in S, that minigame was fun. But if I were to put, say, Bulbasaur in A, you can bet that headlines here in Tokyo tomorrow would say, foreign man slain by razor leaves, autopsy revealed he suffered a critical hit. So if I rate your favorite Pokemon poorly, it's nothing personnel, kid, okay? <laughs> like, these lists, I try to be as objective as possible, okay? I'm sorry. And final, final tangent before we get into the list. As I was making the thumbnail for this video, I sort of realized that the cover art for pretty much every mainline Pokemon game is just garbage. Like, it would all go into the unacceptable tier. It's just the mascot Pokemon on, like, a color gradient. Like, come on, guys, can you try a little harder? Like, I don't think it needs to be, like, Japanese eco-tier, but can we at least get closer to that and further away from, like, Western eco-tier? Please, Game Freak. Alright, with all of that out of the way, how about we actually rank some Pokemon? Imagine that. So I have every Pokemon listed here in Dex order, and I only have their first forms here just to keep the list a little more compact, but when I say Bulbasaur, I really mean Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. So Bulbasaur! Grass, not the best starter type, but luckily Bulbasaur is probably the best grass starter of all time. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in S. Congratulations, Bulbasaur fans. Bulbasaur unfortunately got a huge nerf from Generation 3. Bulbasaur in Gen 1 really relied on Autocrit Razorleaf to be relevant past the early game, and it did a really good job of keeping it relevant because it was overpowered. Uh, now, I would say Bulbasaur is actually the worst starter from, like, Gym 3 onwards. It really falls off. But, it's the best starter for the hardest part of the game. And I think that's enough to warrant an S tiering. Uh, just know, Bulbasaur fans, that, I mean, the Toxic Leeched comments got me so riled up that I spent, like, 30 to 40 hours of my life <laughs> putting together a 15-minute video about how I don't like grass types. So that is the power of grass, even if it's not always the best in-game. Next is Charmander, and Charmander has been buffed by Generation 3. It got a very significant special attack buff, and its move pull is also quite a bit better. It actually gets fly. Unfortunately, I still think that Charmander is the worst fire-type starter of all time. Uh, you cannot accuse me of favoritism when I put Charmander here in A. You really, really rely on your starter at the beginning of the game, specifically Gyms 1 and 2, and Charmander just sucks at that point in the game. It is terrible. In Generation 1, you could actually fight Brock with Charmander and come out on top. Like, if you played smart, uh, using Ember to exploit their poor special defense, and if you, like, growl during Onyx's buy, then maybe, like, use some potions, you could beat Brock with Charmander. You cannot do that in Generation 3. Now Onyx actually has Rock Tomb, a rock move, and you're just gonna die. <laughs> uh, I know that Onyx having 45 attack is like a meme, but remember at this point in the game, you're not exactly using Kanto's finest yourself. Like 45 attack is still enough to destroy you. And you might say that, oh, but imported cheese, you get Metal Claw now, Onyx in shambles. And it's true, yeah, Metal Claw is super effective, while Ember is not very effective. But that doesn't mean that Metal Claw is four times better than Ember. I actually did the calculation, and Metal Claw is like one turn faster, but it's still four turns too slow. You're just gonna die. <laughs> and of course, you never had any hope of fighting Misty. Bubble Beam just annihilates you. I think Charmander is actually quite good, starting from like, Gym 3 onwards, but I don't think it's so good that it actually makes it into S. Sorry, Charmander. Squirtle. I think Squirtle is overall the best starter in Kanto, just like it was in Generation 1. Uh, but really, I could replace Squirtle with, like, the water energy symbol. Squirtle is not here because Squirtle itself is good. Squirtle is here because it's a water type and water is OPOP. <laughs> like, just to be clear, if you got Squirtle around the time you get most of the other water types, which is around Fuchsia City when you get the Good Rod and Super Rod and Surf, uh, it would be a C-tier Pokemon. It is very, very mediocre. There's nothing special about Squirtle except for the fact that Blastoise looks really cool, and that it's a water type that you start the game with. 
which means it's an S tier Pokemon. I think I, I can say right now that there's never going to be a water type starter that's not an S tier. Water is just that good. You start with Squirtle, it's really good in the end game. You can give it like Earthquake and Ice Beam and I guess Body Slam and it's good for the whole game. Congratulations on being a water type Squirtle. Caterpie, are you ready? I think Caterpie is a bottom of S tier Pokemon, but actually an S tier Pokemon. I'm serious. So it actually got a pretty huge buff coming into Gen 3. Specifically, it's got those really creepy compound eyes, <laughs> which is actually one of the best abilities in the game. It basically turns your sleep powder from like a pretty unreliable 75% accuracy into I think 97% accurate, it's basically Spore. And Spore is arguably the best move in the game. Face a Pokemon you can't one-shot, just Spore them. You win. Pretty good. <laughs> it's also your earliest possible Psychic option. And Psychic is still OP OP because there aren't actually any Dark or Steel types that can stop you. There's still a zillion Poison types that you can just pump all your XP into Butterfree and just Psychic your way through the game. I think there are better ways to complete the game, but it is an option which I think warrants actually like a very low S tier placement for Caterpie. Wow. What a difference compared to uh, Weedle, who's terrible. <laughs> Is it D tier terrible? I don't think so since it is available for most of the game, but really there's nothing that exceptional about Beedrill. You get it early, you can evolve it up into Beedrill where its stats are like bad overall, but not bad for that point in the game, and you can maybe kind of do some things with Twin Needle later. Maybe. I wouldn't do it, but you could. So I don't quite think it gets a D. Uh, if you want to see Beedrill actually doing relevant things and being really good, Go play Poke Emblem. Actually, go play that game even if you don't like Beedrill. It's just a good game. Pidgey. The most milk toast of all starter birds. It's fine. Would I describe Pokemon in C as fine? I guess so. It's just very unexciting. Like, here's your early game bird. It's got, like, okay bulk. It's got, like, barely okay offenses. But why would you use this? Just use Spiro, who's available, like, literally 30 seconds later. Sorry, Pidgey. Radita. Not very exciting, but I do think it is... an A-tier Pokemon. This is basically the definition of, like, an early game filler Pokemon, but it is very, very good at being early game filler. It evolves very early into Raticate, gets a big stat increase, and it also notably gets Hyper Fang which is, I think, like a 90 base power, a uh, stab normal type move. You get that fairly early, uh, when it's very relevant. If the opponent doesn't resist normal, just chomp him. Just give him the bite. And they're probably dead. Uh, and later on, when your poor stats really start to catch up with you, you can just toss it into the back lines and stuff it full of HMs. Like, it honestly is useful at most points in the game. And I think that warrants an A rating, even though it's not very exciting. And it also gets one of the better abilities in the game, which is Guts. Uh, Guts gives you a 1.5 uh, attack boost if you are statist, and it can be difficult to get statist. But if you happen to get poison burned or paralyzed, you're going to be doing huge damage. Uh, it's just difficult to actually manipulate your status that way. Spiro, the much cooler and also better Pidgey. I think Spiro is a solid B tier Pokemon. Uh, you can peck some early game bugs. It's more offensively minded than Pidgey, which is what you want. Uh, there's nothing like extraordinary about Spiro, but it's pretty good in the early game. Sure, it's a B. It can sucks. <laughs> this Pokemon is really bad. Uh, I think this is going to be our first uh, addition to Don't Bother. It simply doesn't have the typing, move pool, or stats to do anything useful. Sounds like a D tier Pokemon to me. At least in Gen 1, you could do like Rap Cheese, but Rap no longer locks down your opponent, so Ekans really has nothing. Oof. Pikachu, the series mascot. Pikachu, Pika P, Pika B. It's, it's fine. Uh, it's okay. You get it really early in Viridian Forest. You can zap some early game flying types, zap some Zubats. Uh, you can maybe zap Misty, although I think you'd be better off getting, like, one of the other grass types to do that. 
It's fine. There's nothing exceptional about it. You can eventually Thunderstone it once you get to Celadon City, at which point it becomes okay. You can use it, but I think there are better electric types later on. I think B is a fine place for it. Sandshrew. Sandshrew is okay. I think I can go ahead and put it in B. Probably going to end up kind of low in B by the end of this list. It's fine. There's nothing really exceptional about it, but uh, you can give it Dig really soon. It also learns Dig naturally, I believe. Dig, unfortunately, has been nerfed since Gen 1. It lost 20 base power, and you also lost Auto Crit Slash, which was a really powerful tool. But it's a solid Pokemon. I think it's worth a B. Uh, you maybe could make an argument for it being in C since it's so unexceptional, but I think it's like early availability and like okay attacking stats and stab Dig. I'll get it to B. It's fine. We're gonna do the Needle Twins together. You already know, they've fallen from grace. But, like, not that far. I, I still think that uh, the Needle Twins, specifically uh, Nidoran male, because it is more offensively focused, I still think they're the best Pokemon in the game. Uh, they are just not the best by so much that they get their own tier. Uh, how you're supposed to use these is basically... You get them up to their second form by Mount Moon, you Moonstone them, and then you use the massive stat advantage from that to basically steal all the XP from the rest of the game and just beat the rest of the game solo. <laughs> uh, they have absurd move pools that let you learn almost anything you want. Uh, the main reason that they no longer get their own tier is that they no longer get a uh, Horn Drill cheese. So in Generation 1, Horn Drill, um, a 30% accurate 1 KO move, if you use the X Accuracy item, it became a 100% accurate one in KO, so you had a literal I win button, <laughs> and you no longer have that. So I don't think they get their own tier, but they're still really, really, really good. Uh, you know, Earthquake, Stab Earthquake, uh, they get Thrash in their third form, which is like a very good early game move. Uh, you get Megahorn later with uh, Needle King, which is the best bug move in the game, and Psychic types are pretty dangerous, you can maybe use that. You don't really need it though, Stab Earthquake takes care of most things. Uh, they also did get taken down a peg because they are mixed attackers who no longer have maxed out attack stats thanks to stat XP. But they're still, like, the best Pokemon in the game. It really is still the Nido Kingdom, but, like, not officially. Clefairy! Very cute, also surprisingly very good. I think the Clefairy line actually comes in right behind uh, the Nido Twins. Uh, for much the same reasons. Basically, you Moonstone it as soon as you can, and you use the huge increase in stats, as well as your great move pool, to just solo the rest of the game. Uh, I think you could maybe even argue that Clefairy is better than the Nido Twins. I don't think so, because I think Stab Earthquake is, like, really valuable. Um, but Stab Normal for early game is actually very, very good. You get, like, Mega Punch right away, and Stab Mega Punch is no joke. Clefairy, very, very good. Not quite a fairy type yet, but uh, still great. Vulpix. Uh, it's okay. I think it actually goes in usable. Uh, you can actually Firestone it right away to get it into Ninetales, but the issue is that Ninetales stats are just, like, kind of eh? You would think they'd be better. Like, you would think that Ninetales would be faster and stronger than it is, but unfortunately it's not. Uh, its stats are a bit defensively leaning. It's, like, not bad at all. I think it's on the upper end of C, but I don't really think I can say it's a good Pokemon. It basically only gets fire moves, and you basically have to TM it for everything because stone evolutions lose all of their level-up moves. Jigglypuff. Kind of a parallel to Clefairy. They're both early game, like, cute pink normal types that get immediate moonstone evolutions. And Clefairy's really good, right? I mean, so Jigglypuff has also got to be really good, right? Wrong. This thing's horrible. <laughs> it is very nearly D tier. Instead, I'm just going to put it at the bottom of C. Jigglypuff basically puts all of its points into HP, which is worthless. <laughs> Uh, it gets a crazy good move pool, which is the only reason it's not in D, uh, because you can s waste, basically, a bunch of your TMs on this thing to make it, like, just barely on the bottom end of usable. I wouldn't do that, though. This thing is absolutely useless if you don't give it all those TMs, and I don't think you should. Uh, so you could definitely argue this thing should go in D. I think that's my personal feeling it should be in D, but you can theoretically get it to C. Congratulations, Jigglypuff. Zubat. Zubatto. I think it goes in D. I think it's terrible. <laughs> uh, Zubat really, really, really misses that Crobat evolution. So, the rift between Golbat stats and Crobat stats is immense. 
uh, Crobat has, I believe, the highest base stat total of any non-legendary poison type, and Golbat uh, doesn't, <laughs> to put it lightly. Uh, there will never be any point in the game where you're thinking, oh man, I really wish I had a Golbat, and Zubat stats are just pitiful. Uh, I, I just don't think there's a use for Zubat. So really, Zubat's reputation as just annoying cave spam that never has any use really comes from Gen 1 and the Gen 3 remake where you can't get Crobat. Zubat's terrible, sorry. Oddish. It's a grass type. Grass types aren't that great, but I mean, they are usable. Uh, you can always do some sort of powder utility stuff. It just really wishes it weren't a grass type. Poison isn't great either. Although I will say that if you picked Charmander and you are looking for a way to get past Misty, I would go ahead and move this up to B. So B if you're a Charmander picker, uh, and C otherwise. Paras. Really bad. <laughs> um, terrible typing, bug and grass is just a bad combination. You're weak to almost everything. Uh, the bug stab is useless because you don't actually have any bug moves. The Grass Stab is useless because you lean towards physical attack. Your attack stat's not even that good. Uh, really, the only reason I'm not going to put this in D is because it does get, like, kind of early access to Spore, which is a really, really good move, but you're also, like, really slow. So you're probably going to hit, get hit before you can pull off that Spore. Spore's not nearly as broken in Gen 1, where it was basically an auto-kill because of Gen 1 sleep mechanics. Spore just ends up being, like, a really good move. So this is basically Spore on a stick, uh, and nothing else, which I don't think warrants uh, anything above a low C tier placement. Fun fact, uh, if you're watching this channel, you're probably some brand of weeb, and you might have wondered, like, are there reverse weebs? Or, like, nega weebs? As in uh, Japanese people who have an unhealthy obsession with Western stuff. Uh, there are! And specifically, there is a term called Paris Syndrome, that describes the crushing feeling of disappointment these people experience when they visit Paris, the city, for the first time. Uh, and I'm not trying to diss Paris, I'm not saying it's a bad place, it's just that it can't possibly live up to the ridiculous fairy tale kingdom uh, that these people have built up over uh, years and years of telling their parents, you know, like, I'm not gonna eat this rice, I'm gonna move to France where I'll eat bread every day and it's gonna be everything that Japan isn't. Uh, well, it's true, um, Paris and France, they're not Japan. <laughs> so eventually these people do visit Paris and their dreams are just shattered. Uh, it's just like, I can't really understand anything because nobody speaks Japanese. People seem kind of snooty. And these rats, they don't know anything about fine French cooking. They're just normal rats. Oh man, sacre bleu. I, I don't know how you would say sacre bleu in a, a Japanese accent. Um, sakurai blue. <laughs> I don't know, so there's your rundown on Paris Syndrome. It is a real thing, you can look it up. I think that's enough for this Pokemon tier list. Paris, the Pokemon, goes in C. Venonat. Pretty bad. <laughs> uh, Venonat itself is pathetically weak. Venomoth is, like, okay, uh, but it is fairly late game, so I think it ends up being a C-tier Pokemon. It's basically much better uh, Beedrill, but you don't actually get access to Venonat and Beedrill until much later than the Weedle lines. I'm just going to go ahead and put them together. None of them are that great. Diglett. Diglett Dig, Diglett Dig, Trio, Trio, Trio. I think this actually goes up into A. Uh, for one reason in particular, it's because in Diglett Cave, so that's before Gym 3, at a 5% encounter, you can get like a level 30 Dug Trio and just break the rest of the game. <laughs> Uh, like, level 30 is absurd for that point in the game. Uh, you just sweep through absolutely everything. <laughs> uh, you might even argue that's an S-tier thing, but it does take a little bit of time uh, to actually get that 5% encounter, uh, and to catch it is also kind of dangerous, because <laughs> you need, like, a flying type, otherwise you're just gonna get destroyed. And if you get just a vanilla Diglett, it's still fine, it's still really fast, and you get stab ground moves, it can't be that bad. I think A is fine. Meowth, that's a C-tier placement. <laughs> uh, it wasn't that amazing in Gen 1, but at least in Gen 1, uh, you had a high crit rate because you were really fast, and you also had auto crit slash eventually. You learned it really late. In Gen 3, you just end up being 
a really fast Pokemon that moves first, and then what? It doesn't really do anything. Uh, it does get a really wide move pool, but doesn't really have the stats to really abuse those moves. It does get points from abilities, because it gets pickup, which allows you to just get a uh, grab bag of, like, random free things after battle, which is pretty useful. So, for that reason, I'll put it in C. Not necessarily because you're actually going to be sending it into battle, but because it just gives you free stuff. Psyduck. Very cute. This thing's, like, the definition of C tier. Uh, it's a very whatever water type, but hey, it's a water type. That's pretty good. Put it in C. Mankey. Probably the best fighting type in the game. Fighting overall isn't that great because uh, there's so many poison types that you're not very effective against. But hey, there are fighting type moves in this game, at least. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in high B. Uh, it is decently fast. Uh, you can karate chop things. You can low kick heavy things. And eventually you get cross chop, which does a lot of damage if you actually manage to hit. 80% accuracy is pretty unfortunate. I think it's important to note that if you pick Charmander, I think Mankey is actually A tier, because uh, Mankey is your best way past Brock. Uh, it resists Rock Tomb, and you can low kick Onyx for massive damage. Uh, and you can also low kick other Rock types that might stand in your way before you get like a Grass or Water type option. I think Mankey is perfectly fine. I I'll go ahead and put it in B. Growlithe. So Growlithe is kind of a parallel to Vulpix, so you'd think they'd be like on a comparable power level, and they kind of are. Uh, but I definitely think that... Growlithe is way, way better, specifically because Arcanine, for whatever reason, has crazy stats. <laughs> like, its base stat total is really, really high. I guess because the Pokedex entry for Arcanine describes it as the legendary Pokemon. It's got a really high base stat total, but those stats aren't distributed in the most efficient way. And it also doesn't really have the moves to take advantage of those stats. If this thing had a better move pool, it'd probably be up in B. But it basically ends up being, like... A whatever fire type that like kind of struggles to use its fire typing and struggles to use its really good attacking stat. I think high C is fine for uh, the Growlithe line. Poliwag. It's a water type. I mean, that's worth something, right? It's worth C tier at least. Uh, Poliwrath is at least better than it was in Gen 1 because it actually does kind of get fighting moves and fighting types aren't as bad. Is it not as bad enough to be in B? I don't think so. So enjoy hanging out in C. It's at least noteworthy that you do need to trade Poliwhirl to get Jinx, who is pretty good. I don't think that really counts in the Poliwag line's favor, though. And as for Politoad not being available, who cares? Politoad is not good without Drizzle. Abra. This is one sleepy boy until it hits level 16, at which point it turns every other Pokemon into dead boys. <laughs> Psychic hasn't really been reined in, and this is probably the best Psychic Sweeper in the game. You do have to invest a bit to get it up to level 16, at which point it evolves into Kadabra, can actually, you know, attack things. Uh, but that doesn't take that much work. Uh, much less than Magikarp, because uh, Abra is not actually in the slow experience group, so just switch train it a bit. You get Kadabra. If you can trade it, you can evolve it right away, at which point, like, oh my goodness, the game is over. <laughs> um, uh, even Kadabra's stats... Uh, are really good. If you can get it to Alakazam, it just gets that much better. Uh, it does sort of wish it had more coverage. It's mostly just using psychic attacks. But hey, who's going to stop you? Nobody. <laughs> I think this is an S tier Pokemon for sure. Machop. We've been training since Gen 1. I do think Machop line is actually quite good. Uh, I think I'll put it at the bottom of B. It's not that fighting type is good, it's just that you have 130 base attacks. You can probably do something with that, right? You can just toss on random physical moves and probably do a bunch of damage. And you do get cross chop! Uh, so you can do a bunch of damage with your stab move uh, once you get there, assuming you don't miss. We'll put a bit B. Bellsprout. It's basically a slightly more offensively leaning and therefore slightly better Oddish. So we'll put it slightly higher than Oddish. Uh, again, if you pick Charmander, Bellsprout is quite a bit better. I would move it up to B. I think that's about all I have to say for Bellsprout. I guess while we're in this zone of the tier list, I didn't mention uh, specifically that Oddish gets a new evolution up to Blossom that you can't access. It doesn't matter. Blossom is actually worse than Vileplume. Tentacool. Unfortunately, the Gen 3 remake has been very tentacruel to this line in particular. 
Uh, it had 120 special in Generation 1, which was crazy. Uh, but unfortunately, that 120 special only lives on in the form of 120 special defense, not attack. So I think that tentacle this time lives in the sea. Sorry, buddy, but hey, at least you're still a water type. That's worth something. All right, Geodude. My mom's favorite Pokemon, and I quite like it as well. I think Geodude is a very solid A-tier Pokemon. Uh, it's just really useful throughout the game. You get it really early in Mount Moon. It's got great attack and defense stats. It's speed stat kind of sucks, um, which is unfortunate and will be a lasting issue. Uh, but uh, it has the defense to take the hits. You don't really have to worry. A lot of opponents have these like random normal moves and you can take those all day and hit back with really, really strong stab rock and ground moves. Get this thing up the golem and you have got a great team member uh, for the entire game. It does die to bubble, but there is a way to avoid that. Are you ready? Don't fight water types with Geodude. This is the kind of analysis you can only get from decades of Pokemon experience. Ponyta. This thing's just really unexciting. Uh, it's outclassed by these other mediocre fire types which are available earlier and also can take advantage of an instant stat boost from Firestone, whereas Ponyta has to wait till like, I think the early 40s to evolve into Rapidash. Rapidash's stats aren't that incredible either. It just really wishes that the physical special split had taken place so it can at least get a Flare Blitz off of its better attacking stat. It's not great. It's not a disaster either, but uh, I wouldn't recommend using this, unless you like really like horses, I guess. Slowpoke. Slightly buffed by Gen 3, I, I think it got better special attack, but unfortunately, I still don't think I can place it uh, into B. I think it still goes into the C tier. Uh, it does have some very nice aspects, uh, notably the secondary psychic typing is very, very nice. But uh, the main problem with Slowpoke is in the name. It's really slow. <laughs> uh, you are always going to be moving second. And like, think about how big of a disadvantage that is uh, in an efficient playthrough. So, theoretically, you're going to be one-shotting everything. But, if you're slow, that means before you one-shot them, you have to get hit. So battles take twice as long because now there's two moves per turn instead of one. Not to mention you have to actually heal all that damage up. And, like, I think the only, like, slow Pokemon that escapes this is, like, Geodude. Because it's available so early and does so much for you. Despite the fact that it's going to be getting hit most times. It's still faster than Slowbro, of course. And regarding the inability to evolve into Slow King, it doesn't really matter in the context of an in-game playthrough. The Bro is 100% on par with the King. I think the only difference is their special defense and defense stats are flipped and like some of their move pool is like a little bit different. It doesn't matter. Magnemite. So in red and blue, you could only get Magnemite in the power plant, which locked it off till late game. Pokemon Yellow, you could actually get it on Route 10, which made it way better because it was available for way more of the game. Fire Red and Leaf Green, back to the power plan only. What a shame, because Magnemite earlier would have been much better. It's been buffed in Gen 3 since it now has a Steel type, which is the best type in the game, so congratulations Magnemite. But because it's available so late, I'm going to have to give it a C. Eh, we'll put it around here-ish. Uh, to be clear, once you get it, it's like fine. It is on the slow side, but it's got crazy special attack. So you can just Thunderbolt stuff and probably do a bunch of damage if they're not a ground type. Uh, I guess if you are a huge Magnemite fan, you just can't wait to get to the power point. I hear that there's some uh, shots going around you can receive to turn you yourself into a Magnemite. Just a rumor though. Farfetched. I think that was pretty good. Unlike Farfetched. <laughs> uh, Farfetched is really bad, but it's really bad on purpose because it's literally a joke. I say this every time, but Farfetch'd is based on a proverb, uh, be aware of a duck that comes bearing leeks, because apparently you're supposed to cook ducks with leeks, so if it comes to you with the leeks, like, it's too good to be true, and you get Farfetch'd in a trade. So it's supposed to represent you being cheated by trading, you know, a pretty good Spearow for a really terrible Farfetch'd. In Gen 1, you can at least eventually abuse Autocrit Slash, but you don't even get that here. Sorry, Farfetch'd. <laughs> Doduo. So Spiro was better Pidgey. Where's Pidgey? <laughs> and Doduo is better Spiro. <laughs> I do think that Doduo is overall worse, 
because you get Doduo significantly later, past the point where you really need to pick all those early game bugs, but it's still fine. Like, if you're going to use a normal flying type Pokemon, you definitely gonna go with Doduo over Spearow. I can't say that Dodrio is strictly better, but if you side by side their stats, they have the same speed. Firo has five more base HP. Dodrio has 20 more base attack, which is huge, but watch out! Because Firo has literally one more special attack and special defense. Uh, and in Gen 7, they buffed Dodrio, and they didn't buff Firo. F's in the comments for Firo. <laughs> Seal. Localization team really flexed on us by spelling it S E E L Seal. I prefer to spell it S E A C. Seal. Good lord. So boring. But it's a water type, so I mean, gets to be in C tier. Congratulations. Grimer. Bad. <laughs> a really late game availability and it's defensive poison type. What are you going to do with that? Nothing. D tier. Shelder. You can water stone it immediately into Cloyster, who has insane defense. Who cares? C. Ghastly. Unfortunately held back a bit by its pretty late availability. I believe you need the Sylph Scope to actually capture this. But once you do get it, it's pretty darn good. Uh, it is really fast and really strong, which is what you want in a Pokemon. I just wish you could get it earlier. It has Levitate, which is really nice, so it's no longer ground weak. And uh, just being a ghost type means that you dodge every normal in fighting move. They just can't hit you. And there's a fair amount of normal moves flying around there. So it's got some defensive utility, despite the fact that it is, you know, pretty frail just going by its stats. You can just feed this a bunch of really powerful special TMs and do a bunch of damage. But a little bit late in the game. So that's what keeps it out of A or S. Ah, uh, here we go. Onyx! You guys know I don't like Onyx. But... We do our best to be objective in these tier lists, and Gen 2 and beyond, we can't in good conscience put Onyx as the worst Pokemon in the game, because it's not, right? You can evolve into Steelix, who it's not great, but like, it's fine, certainly not the worst Pokemon in the game. Uh, that being said, in Fire Red and Leaf Green, Onyx is the worst Pokemon in the game. Uh, at least I care enough about Onyx to give it its own tier, right? Onyx is just useless, I think that's the best word for it. Uh, it doesn't wall anything, because even though it has really good defense, it has awful HP, so it still dies. Obviously, it dies to bubble. And what are you going to do in return with 45 attack? Absolutely nothing. You have Stab Earthquake, but who cares? It still tickles off of that pathetic 45 base attack. Why is this thing so bad? Oh my goodness. Definitely the biggest, like, loser from the evolution restrictions. Steer clear of Onyx, please. If, if not for you, your sake, for mine. Oh, Drowsy. It's okay. I'd say it got nerfed by the special split because its stats now favor special defense. But I mean, it's still a psychic type in what's basically a Gen 1 environment. So and we'll put it in like the B-ish tier. Like you use psychic moves, it's pretty good. Just do that. Krabby. Uh, cookie starts with C. We'll put it in S-E-A-C tier. It's like, okay, it's Water Stab is basically unusable because its special attack is so bad, but you have 130 base attack, so you can maybe use random physical moves and do all right-ish? Sorry, Krabby. W one more generation, you're almost there. Voltorb. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Uh, it just lacks the attacking power to do much of anything you can give it your thunderbolt tm i wouldn't recommend that but you can at which point it's like usable hey c tier is for usable pokemon let's put it there uh we'll put it uh, next to magnemite i think magnemite is way better once you actually get magnemite but that's way later so magnemite's lower execute pretty heavily nerfed by the special split it lost a ton of special defense Luckily, we don't care about special defense. Unluckily, we do care about the fact that this is available really late, like Safari Zone. Whoop. You can Leaf Stone it up to Executor immediately, but then you're going to need to use, like, the Psychic TM on this thing. And it never really gets any good grass moves, because there really aren't any grass moves that are good in Generation 3. Hey, we'll put it in C. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's not great either. Alright, Cubone. 
It's a very mediocre Pokemon, so it goes in C with an asterisk. So, you notice that this thing's holding a club. If it happens to be a thick club, there's a 5% chance that Wild Cubon are holding a thick club. Uh, then this thing actually becomes like A tier. <laughs> uh, so, thick club, what it does, it's only usable by the Cubone line, and it doubles your attack stat. So, I wouldn't actually run Sword Dance, but if you have doubled attack for free, that's really good. <laughs> and at that point, you can just use random physical moves and destroy everything. So, if you get that 5% thick club, uh, it's an A tier Pokemon. Otherwise, it's like a very mediocre, not noteworthy C tier Pokemon. Hitmon Lee. We are kicking in C tier. Uh, not very good <laughs> uh, because it's available kind of late, uh, but at least it's better than it was in Gen 1 because there actually are fighting type moves you can use uh, and you're super effective against the Magnemite line now. I'm, I'm trying to come up with things to make this thing seem better. It's not terrible by any means. Like, it's not unusable, but it is not great. Hitmonchan. It's basically bad Hitmon Lee because it has less attack. It doesn't have Iron Fist yet. It also can't really use the elemental punches yet because they're still special since the physical special split hasn't happened yet. At least if I put them together here in the tier, it makes them look like they're fighting each other. I mean, that's kind of cool. Just be glad you're not in D this time, Hitmonchan. True facts. The Pokemon Stadium Lickitung minigame, really fun. Also true facts. Lickitung, really bad. <laughs> Uh, I think actually D tier bad. Like, there are some single stage Pokemon that have good stats. And then there's Lickitung. Like, why are these stats so bad? I know it gets an evolution in Gen 4, but, I mean, that hasn't happened yet. Awful. At least it gets a good move pool, but, oof. Coughing. Bad. <laughs> uh, it's basically Grimer. It's slightly better than Grimer because, hey, at least you've got a ground immunity, but available late defensive poison type. What are you going to do with that? Nothing. Stick him in D. Rhyhorn. Unfortunately available kind of late. It's a Safari Zone catch, so we're just going to kind of throw it down here and see. If you can get it up to Rhydon, it's quite good, but Rhyhorn stats kind of suck. It's basically Geodude. It's very strange, you'd expect them to be better, but Geodude is available right at the beginning of the game. Uh, also gets a power spike evolving into Graveler, whereas Rhyhorn doesn't. You have to wait all the way till you get to that Rhydon evolution, and you get him near the end of the game anyway, so... That's why there's such a huge gap in their uh, tiering placement. Chansey. Uh, even if this could evolve into Blissey, and then evolve again into the fictional Blissier, uh, this would be a D. Uh, <laughs> Uh, its only utility is walling things, you do not care about walling, and you're also never going to catch this thing in the first place, because it's a Safari Zone encounter, a rare one at that, and the Safari Zone mechanics are still Gen 1, which is to say, HORRIBLE! <laughs> AWFUL! Uh, are you going to spend, like, an hour running around in the Safari Zone just to try and catch a Chansey? No, you're not. D tier. Tangela. I said it right this time. It's been buffed by the generation split. It now gets more special attack. D tier. <laughs> uh, it's a grass type with overall mediocre stats and little to no utility that you get near the end of the game. That's a D. One more gen and you get Tangrowth though. It's like pretty good. Kangaskhan. Really decent stats. Unfortunately... It's a Safari Zone catch, and a rare one, so it doesn't quite go in D, because if you catch it, it's like, fine. Good luck catching it, you're gonna need it. Horsey. C is right, that's where this thing's going. A Kingdra is definitely an upgrade if it could get it, but I don't think it would upgrade it enough to escape C. It is available fairly late in the game. It's not like Kingdra has remarkable stats or anything, it just has better defensive typing, which... Who cares about defenses? Not me! Goldeen, Goldeen, Goldeen. Like, what do I really have to say about this thing? Like, do you feel guilt over flushing your childhood goldfish down the toilet? Maybe make up for that uh, by naming your Goldeen after it, teaching it surf, and maybe using it in your playthrough. I don't know why else you would use this thing. It's so outclassed by everything else that's a water type. Oh, my God. Star you Doesn't go in C tier. It actually goes in A tier. Uh, for one main reason, because this is probably the single best template 
for all of your powerful TMs. So what you do is you get the super rod. I guess you could also get the good rod. They're available at the same time for whatever reason. Just use the super rod. You fish up your star you. You evolve it immediately with a water stone because you want the stats and you do not care about the level up moves. You teach it surf. You teach it ice beam. You teach it psychic. You teach it thunderbolt. The game's over. Like, what can stop you with that moveset? Nothing. Uh, the only reason this isn't in S is because you have to wait for most of the game before you can actually just start winning the game with Star You and Star Me. And also because you're like kinda underleveled when you get fished up. That's it, otherwise this thing is really 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 good. Kya! Mr. Mime. Uh, one of the most disturbing designs of all time, I, I really just get uncomfortable looking at this thing, uh, but I can't deny that it's really really good. <laughs> um, it's basically interchangeable with Abra. Uh, literally, right? Because you catch Abra, and then you trade it for a Mr. Mime, like, as soon as you can get through Diglett's cave. And the differences are that even though Alakazam has, you know, better stats, Mr. Mime's stats are good enough to still beat everything, especially because you get trade XP, so you'll probably be a higher level uh, than an Alakazam that has fought the same amount of battles. And you get Thunderbolt, which Alakazam really wishes it could get. So you could just swap these. They're basically the same. They're both really, really good. Uh, just, Game Freak, why did you make this thing? <laughs> it's... Ugh. Scyther. You can get it from the game corner, but it's really expensive, so you're probably going to get it from the Safari Zone, unfortunately. Stats-wise, it's actually pretty good. It's, like, pretty fast, and it's got good attack. It just doesn't get any good attacks. It's a bug flying type, doesn't get any good bug moves. Doesn't get any good flying moves either. It doesn't really hurt it that much that they can't evolve it to Scizor, because Scizor doesn't actually get a stat increase? It's very weird. Scizor and Scyther have the exact same base stats, they're just rearranged. And also, Flying is like an okay type, whereas Steel is OP OP OP. <laughs> it was basically Game Freak saying, Hey, we added a new type, it's really 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 good. It's so good that we don't even have to increase your stats to change you from a good Pokemon into one of the best Pokemon ever. Please nerf Steel. Jinx! So Jinx is trade exclusive, you have to trade a Poliwhirl for it in Cerulean City. And because it's a trade Pokemon, you actually get the XP boost. So even though it's available like kinda late, that doesn't matter as much because it's easier to catch up. I think Jinx is actually like quite good, which is why we'll put it in the good tier. Uh, it's nice and fast, it's got pretty good special attack, and Ice and Psychic is a really powerful, like, attacking combination. Uh, one thing you just have to be careful of is that Jinx does not actually learn Psychic by level up, so you have to save your Psychic TM for it. And I think there are uh, other Pokemon you could use the Psychic TM on, like Staryu. But Jinx is perfectly fine. Uh, Electabuzz. Greatest cry in the series, at least in the anime. <laughs> Uh, but it is a power plant exclusive, so you don't get it until quite late. Uh, it is perfectly fine once you get it. Uh, but I think without, like, the trade XP boost, it's, like, kind of underleveled. Uh, so, I mean, we'll put it, like, the top of C. It's fine. Uh, I would rather use this over uh, Magnemite, because even though Electabuzz is a little bit weaker, it is significantly faster. It's my best Electabuzz cry. Pinsir. Mostly known nowadays for being bad Heracross, but Heracross isn't in this game, so we're back to Gen 1 where it was bad Scyther. <laughs> uh, pretty much everything that applies to Scyther also applies to Pinsir, including the Game Corner thing. Uh, Pinsir is slightly stronger, but it's also significantly slower. Uh, I'd rather be faster. Neither of these are like that great anyway. Things are really rough for Pinsir until the Mega Evolution. Hang in there, buddy. Tauros! Really, really strong. Unfortunately, it's a Safari Zone catch, so you're not getting one. It's probably the best of the Safari Zone crew. So it gets that consolation. Oh, wow. Okay, this is kind of nice framing. This is a mistake. I, I meant to put it uh, here. I, in fact, you know, let's just move uh, Kangaskhan up a bit. I think Kangaskhan's better than these bugs. There we go. If you can catch a Tauros, it's pretty good. You're not catching one, though. Whoops. Magikarp, the iconic useless Pokemon, at least until you evolve it up into Gyarados, at which point it becomes pretty good. Uh, this is actually your only water type option <laughs> if you didn't pick Squirtle uh, until I think the next earliest is Celadon City where you can get Vaporeon. And water types are pretty good, but you have to invest a ton into Magikarp, which is of course, you know, the point. Uh, but it is a significant investment. Uh, level 20 doesn't sound that high, but Magikarp is in the slow experience group, so it takes quite a while. Gyarados, of course, is very good, so I think we end up being like mid-B-ish tier. 
Uh, you can give it, like, the Bubble Beam TM, I guess, once you get it up to Gyarados status. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have physical Water-type moves yet, so it, it, it hasn't reached its full power, but it's still pretty good once you get it to Gyarados. And with 125 base attack, again, you can just give random physical moves, and it'll probably do tons of damage. Magic Up, I think, lands itself in B in the remakes. And it gets Intimidate, which is one of the few good abilities in the game. Eh. Lapras. It's a pretty good Pokemon, but unfortunately, the Lapras you're gifted in Silph Co. is like level 15, which is absolutely pathetic for that point in the game. So, I think it goes into C. Otherwise, it might actually make it into like the bottom of B. Uh, but as it is, it's just so underleveled, like you have to put so much work into this to actually make it like a good Pokemon. So I think it, it, it drops it down into the C, unfortunately. Very cute though. Ditto. Available late game and all it can do is transform into your opponent and your opponents tend to be quite bad. Which makes Ditto quite bad. Uh, D tier bad. <laughs> Honestly, this thing is almost unacceptable tier, but chances are you're going to be transforming into something better than Onyx. So like it's not quite that bad. Even if you transform into a good Pokemon, you have to spend a turn to transform, and your HP doesn't actually copy theirs. So best case scenario, you end up as the generic brand of your opponent, minus a turn. That's horrible. Vaporeon, the first of the evolutions we're going to look at. It's actually your earliest option for a water type if you didn't pick Squirtle or grind up your Magikarp, and that I think allows it to escape the C tier and Occupy B. We're gonna put it right next to Magikarp. Its stats are defensively leading, but its special attack is still more than good enough. Uh, it's a perfectly fine option. Uh, it also like has the ability to melt with acid armor, and it melts my heart. This thing is so cute. Quite, quite a good Pokemon overall. Vaporeon is good, but I don't think it's the best evolution in the game. I think that honor has to go to Jolteon, who I also think is just the best electric type in the game. You can get him as soon as you get to Celadon City, just Thunderstone your Eevee, and you're good to go. It's really fast, so it moves first. And then what? It does a ton of damage, that's what. 110 special attack, just give it Thunderbolt, just zap everything, unless it's, you know, immune to electric. It gets some other moves like Double Kick and Pin Missile, but you don't really need those, just Thunderbolt stuff. Pretty good. Of all the Pokemon to nerf in this special split, why would you nerf Flareon? Have some mercy, why don't you? <laughs> oh my god. So Flareon has 130 base attack, that's pretty good. And in Generation 1, it had 110 special attack, that's also pretty good. Why in the world would you decide to make it 110 special defense? <laughs> and drop its special attack down to 90? Oh no. I don't think this thing is D tier bad, but like compared to its Evolution brethren, this is so sad. Uh, F's in the comments for Flareon as well. 130 base attack, I mean, you can do something with that, and that something is return, basically. This thing gets no moves. You can use return off of a good attack stat, but why would you not just give return to something else? You can use flamethrower off of 90 base special attack, that's not terrible, I guess. F's in the comments for Flareon, it's so sad. Porygon. Really, really, really wishes it could upgrade to Porygon 2, but unfortunately, pre-National Dex, you are stuck with, like, Windows 95 Porygon here, and this thing is bad. This thing is a Porygoner D tier for sure. You get this thing from the game corner. You could either spend your entire life playing the slots to get the coins legit, or you could spend your life savings to pay to win and just exchange your money for the coins, but it's not even pay to win, it's pay to lose because this thing's terrible. <laughs> like, these stats are so bad. I mean, I guess you could give it, like, some okay TMs and, like, its special attack stat is, like, on barely usable side of things, but, like, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I would suggest skipping this thing till we get the, uh, the upgrade version later. Ammonite, how devoted am I to Lord Helix? I mean, C tier devoted. It's okay, uh, Omastar has got really good special attack, but this thing just comes in so late, even later than the other C Pokemon, since you have to actually reach Cinnabar Island. It's like okay, but I don't think it's worth anything above a C tier. Kabuto. Omanite is definitely way better than Kabuto. So, Kabuto, you get, same point in the game, Cinnabar Island, so really late, except you don't even reach C tier, because your Water Stab is useless, your special attack is horrible. You're basically just gonna be using Rock Slide and, like, Slash. 
Uh, it's not quite D tier, but it is not very good at all. I think we're going to put it like here-ish. Because uh, it is still a water type, you get those bonuses. But it's not worth that much, not enough to get it to C at least. Sad story for Kabuto. One more gen, and then at least you can uh, start dominating on some rain teams. That's something. Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl really wishes it was available earlier. It's really, really, really fast. It is on par with Jolteon for speed, 130. And its moves have gotten a lot better since Gen 1. I believe it now gets Rock Slide, and I think it also gets Earthquake. I might be wrong on that. But at least with Rock Slide, it can be doing something. The main issue is just that it's a Cinnabar Lab Pokemon, so you don't get it until the game is already almost over. And it's not like it takes over the game at that point, it's just a solid option that still comes in, like, a little underleveled. We'll put the Fossil Twins here, uh, staring up longingly at the sea. Very sad. Hey everyone, post-production imported cheese here. It turns out that unlike in the originals where the fossils all revive at level 30, in the remakes, the fossils revive at level 5, making all three of them completely useless. Guess they go to the bottom of D. Whoops. Snorlax. Very cute, and like, kind of good? Uh, the main issue with Snorlax, it's sort of the same one with Slow Bro, or even though it's good, it's really, really slow. <laughs> you are never moving first with Snorlax, and that comes with a ton of downsides. So even though using Snorlax means you will probably win eventually, uh, you're gonna end up taking quite a bit of damage, uh, and then you have to heal that damage up. And Snorlax has really high HP, which is good, because you know, you're not gonna die, but it's bad because you actually have to use more healing items or stronger healing items to patch up that HP. Snorlax was buffed by the special split. You now have really good special defense, but uh, that still doesn't offset the issues that it has. I think top of C is fine for Snorlax. It's a good Pokemon. You can use it without being made fun of by me. Articuno and Zapdos. I think I'm going to rate these together because they basically fulfill the same role. They're both going at the very bottom of A because they are both your late game, like, free carries. Uh, you don't have to invest anything to get them. You just have to reach them and then catch them. And they're both really, really strong for free. Uh, they come at a nice, high, usable level, and they do a ton of damage to either the last two gym leaders or the Elite Four. I think that is worth a bottom of A placement because they will be useful if you choose to go get them. And last, but not quite least, is Dratini. I'm sorry, but the tier list is kind of wigging out and I can't put Dratini in the unrated space. Dragonite is pretty darn good, but you don't start with Dragonite. You start with Dratini late in the game in the Safari Zone, which is pretty darn bad. So I do not think I can put Dratini any higher than tier. Uh, it's just really weak, and it is in the slow experience group, so up until you get it to Dragonair, it's just pitiful. Dragonair itself is also not that good, and then you have to wait all the way to level 55 to actually get its Dragon, at which point it becomes pretty good. Not even that amazing, because Dragon is still a special type, so you can't actually use your amazing attack stat with your strongest moves. And I, I don't think Outrage is even 120 base power yet, it might still be 90. So sad, sad times all around for Dratini. As an in-game Pokemon, of course. And there you go, that is my in-game tier list for Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be after I edit out all the dead air, but probably upwards of an hour. So thank you for sticking with me as we re-explored the Kanto region. I'm sure Game Freak will never make us do that again. <laughs> if you liked the video, please like maybe consider sacrificing 25% of your HP to set up that sub if you haven't already. And although Umbreon and Espeon aren't in this installment of the game, the Patreon is always available <laughs> as the link in the description. Uh, please consider becoming a Patreon just if you want to support me and my content. Uh, it's not pay to win because you do pay, you don't really win anything. Uh, <laughs> except for my undying thanks. Uh, and a couple, like, minor perks, uh, like, you get to vote on a different series of Karen challenges, and, like, you can make me read lines at the end of videos. <laughs> thank you so much to my current Patreons, and thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, which is where this line will be. Uh, thank you, and I hope to see you in the next video, which will be the Gen 5 tier list, like, eventually. Uh, maybe like two, three, or four videos down the line. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Bye.